I'm Susan Delamontes Eggman. I'm an assembly member representing the 13th district, which is San Joaquin County in Stockton. Uh, prior to that, I'm also a professor at Sacramento State, and I'm a social worker, and very proud of it. I started coming out in high school. I um, I got a, had a girlfriend in high school. You know, when you first start, you like, you know, she's so cute, and, and you know, and I don't know. Anyway, so we entered into a relationship, and then uh, I graduated from high school. And really felt like I wasn't accomplishing a whole lot in my life and felt like I wanted to be strong for her. And uh, so I ended up going into the military for four years. And, and I'll never forget when I was getting ready to go in the Army, um, somebody told me, like, watch out, I hear there's a lot of lesbians in the Army. And I said, oh, I'll, I'll look out for them. So I did four years in the military. Uh, and then when I got out, um, I started working in drug and alcohol field. I always knew I wanted to work with people in some kind of helping way. Um, so I started working in drug and alcohol, I got my bachelor's degree in psychology, um, and then, then I got my master's degree in social work, and then I did a lot of work with uh, End of Life. I was a hospice social worker, uh, and very proud to follow in that footsteps. My, my mom had been one of the first Spanish-speaking hospice volunteers in our county, uh, which, you know, I just think, yeah, I think education can be such a game changer for, for people. Um, and, you know, when I went through high school, I did not do well. I was, you know, my, we, we moved from uh, where I grew up uh, to another community when I was about 13. And so my high school years were, ro were rough and rocky, and uh, I barely graduated. Um, you know, and people always said, oh, she's so bright, she can do anything she wants. But, you know, if you graduate with about a 1.5, you don't have a whole lot of options. Uh, so I started at uh, Stanislaus State, and I, and I wasn't doing well again. I was, you know, caught up and coming out. I wanted to spend all kinds of time with my girlfriend, playing frisbee in the park, rather than... Uh, doing what I needed to be doing, which is why I made the decision to go in the military. Uh, and But when I got out and I started to do, uh, got my degree in psychology, and that went all right. I wasn't a great student. But by the time I like, found my passion about working with people uh, and getting my master's degree in social work, it just felt like a part of my identity. And at that point is when I really hit my stride. And that wasn't until I was uh, in my 30s that I really started hitting my academic stride. But I did very well. Uh, you know, was a, got asked to be the keynote speaker for my, my graduating class and then got a huge amount of uh, encouragement to go on to get my Ph.D. And there also, I put something up on my wall over there that says I was the most excellent student in the university at one point, which, you know, my family kind of laughs at. Then I was elected to the Stockton City Council. I was the first Latina and the first out uh, lesbian, LGBT person to be elected to a uh, elected position from the Oregon coast to the... To the um, to the Tehachapi, right down the middle of the Red Valley. Uh, and when I decided I was going to run, people said, you can't run as an out lesbian. I'm like, you know what? I have to run. People don't have to vote for me, but it's important for me to run. Um, and so I just ran as out and proud and, you know, didn't make it a huge issue. Um, and I ended up being being elected to office. And then when I ran for re-election, 75% of the people voted for me. Uh, and then when I ran for the state assembly, I was also elected with an overwhelming victory, um, despite serving in a city like Stockton that's got a lot of hardships. Um, so, but my philosophy has really always been around around mentoring, helping others. And it is not enough for us to open the door and be successful on our own if we can't open that door and bring ten people with us. The night I got sworn in, my, my family came and uh, you know I asked people to speak a little bit, and my, my my aunt said, you know, my poor sister, she didn't think this girl was going to graduate from high school, and now look where she is. So you know how you start out does not have to be where you end up. And I think it just takes, you know, finding your passion, being as much of you as you can be. Uh, I always think it's way too hard to try to think about, you know, who do I want to be or who, you know, do other people want me to be. Just be who you are and your, your skills and talents of relationship and being in your family and your church and your school, whatever, your neighborhood, whatever those are. Just, you know, fully embody them and just be who you are. Uh, find your passion. Uh, and, and education is a great way to, to you know, to give you legitimacy uh, in ways that sometimes not having a degree does. And it just opens up so many pathways for your, the next generation after you. Every cousin, every brother and sister, everybody who looks up to you is more likely to go to college if you go to college. So I, I think it's unfair to say that all Latinos are alike or all gays are alike. So I, I, think, I think we have to acknowledge that in any groups there are going to be differences. And I think we also have to focus on ways that if we work together, uh, we're always more powerful if we have some kind of united voice. So I think the charge for all of us is always to find things that we can agree on versus things that we disagree on. 
find things that bring us together versus find things that pull us apart. Because there's always going to be those haters out there who are going to look for the differences to try to drive a wedge through it. And we need to be smarter than that. And I think we are smarter than that.